The Drummer and the Great Mountain Load, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adult ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. How you doing? All right, so today's podcast, we're going to do a mid-year reboot, a mid-year check-in. I feel like uh, the last few years I've been doing like the beginning of the year uh, pep talk, get you going. Uh, We also connect that with the workshop. Um, This year, and I feel like this is really important to put this mid-year because often we get fired up when we're starting the year off. We have their New Year's intentions, some of us, not all of us. Uh, But then as we get towards summer, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or winter, if you're uh, going into, if you're down in Australia, um, it's often a time where you're taking time off. Maybe you're scheduling, uh, you've scheduled a vacation and uh, it's so important to use this time uh, as you're maybe getting some space in your schedule to uh, check in on your goals, see where you're at, see what you want to do, or more than likely, um, maybe you're, you're feeling like, uh, you don't have the goal. You're not clear. You want to get clear about how do you want your life to change? What do you want to make? How do you want to make a difference in your life? How do you integrate some of the things that we talk about on this podcast into habits? And often this time of year is a really good time to revisit. So in tandem to the upcoming workshop, for those of you who can't make it, um, I wanted to give you just sort of a, a refresher and, and look back at like, okay, here's here's where I started at the beginning of the year. Here's what worked. Here's what didn't work. Um, and then how do you get back up? Because hunter types are so, we have such a tendency to be uh, all or nothing. It is, it's part of our wiring. It's a very common trait. And how we break that habit is by continue, like building that muscle of getting back up again, getting building that muscle of uh, building a habit of completion, assessing, reassessing, uh, continually revisiting our goals. Because if we keep doing that, we we hit them. If we we reach the goals that we want. If you don't do, if you don't have that habit, you never achieve the goals that you really care about. Uh, and I know you know this, but it's such a good reminder. I need to remind myself of that because I have that same exact tendency. And uh, even in putting together the book, if you've read the book at the very beginning, I say, if I had not integrated the things that I talk about in this book, it would not exist. And uh, if you have the physical copy of the book, you'll see like it was a pretty, pretty big effort to make that happen because I wanted to give you guys a really solid reference book that you can carry with you your whole life and it would stay relevant all the way through. Maybe little tech things would change here and there. Some technologies may change, but everything in it is still, it wanted to be relevant like 20, 30 years out. So um, with that, I wanted to take this podcast to do a mid-year reboot, address, you know, how do you take goals and distill them down? I know we've talked about this in the past, but also more importantly, 
uh, revisiting those goals, getting some energy back into the goals that you've, you've set for yourself, and then finding a way through to the next point. It's like if you keep giving yourself, here's like the next little goal, here's the next little point, and you keep moving towards that, you hit it or you get close, and then you get you, you assess and go, okay, I got to this point, now here's my next piece. Um, reminding you to do that, I feel like is really helpful. I, I, I get the feedback. I know from my coaching clients that just that consistent check in over and over on your goals, you move forward on them. When you don't do that, we tend to forget in hundred types, unless we're hyper focused on something in that moment, the bigger goals in life tend to just fade away or we feel discouraged and then we lose traction and we lose energy and then we fall back into old patterns of, um, somewhat addictive patterns for a lot of us, or just at least like numbing of just like, oh, I'm never going to change. <sighs> and we get into that rut. And I know you guys go through this because you email me all the time about this. So I know we all are in this soup together. But on the other end of it, we have such amazing capacity to hyper-focus and make things happen in our lives. And so we need to utilize that tendency to our advantage. Uh, in pursuing our goals and getting the support we need to make some to make traction in the goals that we have and continually coming back to what do I need to get clear getting clear over and over again where am I at right now where am I stuck where do I need support on if we keep coming back to that over and over again we make progress so before we begin, I want to remind you that the next Alive Online Workshop begins May 18th, and the Early Bird Special uh, ends this coming Saturday at midnight on May 11th. So if you want to get the Early Bird pricing, please do so. We are starting to fill up. Uh, so I usually we will extend the registration for the workshop will end the Thursday before the beginning of the workshop. So that'll be 18th, the May 16th, end of day, May 16th. Uh, but we're starting to fill up, so we may close before then. So if you're on the fence, I would highly encourage you to register now. We have people from all over the world, so really excited to see, a, once again, a really eclectic, uh, interesting group of people already starting to to join us. Sometimes I'm emailing back and forth with people throughout the year. Uh, and so I'm really pleased to see some people, some familiar uh, people that I've been corresponding with that are joining us. Uh, so if you can make it, uh, once again, just as a quick reminder that we cover the four key areas for hunter types. Uh, and as I go through this, uh, the today's podcast, I'll be talking quite a bit about some of these pieces. Uh, first session will be life visioning. That's setting goals, getting clear about your goals, refining your goals. This will be interactive. So this will not just be a bunch of information. This is actually you getting the support you need to set goals, to get clear, to talk with other hunter types who have similar challenges as well as superpowers as yourself. Uh, the second session, we dovetail into time management. How do you build a strong time management system so that you can take the goals that you have and see them manifest into the world, have, build the habits you need to build? Time management, as we'll talk about in today's podcast, is so essential for this process. You cannot uh, expect to have goals for yourself and not have a decent time management system in place. It's just, it's so difficult to do it without a good time management system. So we talk about hunter type friendly time management systems. I'm going to be going deep into mind mapping, which was a big hit in the last workshop. So I'm going to be revisiting that and refining it even more. So that'll be the second, uh, Saturday of the workshop. Third Saturday, we'll be going into wellness planning, especially for hunter types. How do you get your wellness routine in place from exercise, cardio, supplements, all the th taking care of yourself. What are the things that you need in your regular schedule that are going to fully vitalize you to give you the full benefit of all of your superpowers? So you're not stressed or drained. You've got these habits and things locked into your schedule so that you continue to function at your highest potential. And then finally, creating support systems. This is how do you bring all these pieces together? How do you address overwhelm and 
and getting stuck and how do what do you do when you've you've fallen off and you need to get back up again again some of these topics we'll talk about today in the podcast but most importantly how do you build into the system of your life the support you need to keep going on all of those things that you most care about to see your goals manifest it's all about having support systems. You can have all the information in the world. You can understand all of these concepts, but unless there's real support and systems built into your life, it's very difficult to continually get back up again, to continually move towards the goals you've set for yourself and see them accomplished. So I really hope you can join us. Super excited about this. We've added this midpoint uh, workshop. I feel like this is such a good time going into the summer if you're in the northern hemisphere to have a reboot to set some time aside so that you can refresh and revitalize your goals and get the support you need and meet a bunch of really cool people. You'll be able to hear from people who are listening to the podcast that are aligned with the things that you care about. And um, I just love it. This is just the high points of my years doing this workshop. So I hope you can join us. Uh, if you're interested, go to alivelifecoaching.com forward slash course. Again, that's alive life lifecoaching.com forward slash course, C-O-U-R-C-O-U-R-S-E. Uh, or you can go to the drummer in the great mountain.com page and you'll be able to see the link at the top. Okay. So mid-year check-in, uh, summer's coming up for most of the people listening on this podcast. And, um, this is a perfect time to do a reboot on your goals. This is such a key time because many of you are taking time off, as I said before, and uh, it's a great time to like schedule time off to catch your breath. If you don't have vacation time coming up and you have some vacation time at work, maybe you work for yourself and you, that, and it's even more important then to schedule time off. Uh, it's a good time to, to just catch your breath, get clear, work out what kind of support you need for the goals that you've set for yourself and just take care of yourself. Some of you are burned out, you're tired, you're overwhelmed by life. And because there's perhaps a lack of setting boundaries, um, you're just constantly on that cycle of just going and going and going and reacting and reacting. So summer's a really great time to stop even just for a couple days catch your breath, give yourself maybe one day where you sleep in really late and you just recharge your batteries. And then once you've gotten some revitalization and relaxation, then you can, it's often a good time to then get clear, to sit down with your goals. Or if you haven't set goals for this year, for yourself to sit down and start mapping those out. Uh, so you, maybe you're considering shifting jobs. Maybe it's a creative project that you want to do. Uh, maybe you want to dial in your health routine. That's a really common goal for many of the people that I talk to from the podcast that, that are listeners. Um, and maybe you just want to catch up on the big pile of mundane to do's that have been piling up and piling up and piling up. So this is a good time to sit down. Uh, I recommend mind mapping. That's my tool of choice. I find when I teach the workshops and we go into mind mapping, most people, most hunter types love it. And so it's a really productive tool to sit down and quickly get clear about the different areas of your life. And so in the workshop, what we'll do, uh, if you're joining us, is we will, I'll show you the mind mapping technique that I use for planning your day. And that's also a really good technique for then mapping out goals in the different areas of your life, like work, health, relationships, creativity, service finances, all these different areas, when you start to, to take all the giant thing that is your life and all of your intentions and, and have clear containers to put your goals in, it makes life so much, it makes it so much easier to then take those and then distill them down into doable actions. So this is a really good time to also dial in your time management system because time management is really the tool necessary to block out time for yourself, for the goals that you really care about, and what we'll talk about here in a second, setting boundaries. If you don't have any kind of, if you can't delineate the time in your life and you can't say, okay, at this point I'm gonna do this, and then follow through on that, especially, especially if it's something that you really care about. 
Uh, it's often easier to do it when it, we have someone else that we're doing it for. That's much easier for, for blocking out time for ourselves, for some things that we really care about. Often that's really difficult, especially for hunter types. But time management and time management tools are your friend. That is how you can set the boundaries you need to set and put together the support system you need. So if you're not able to do it by yourself, you can at least look at it and go, okay, I know I have this time from here to here, and that's when I'm going to schedule uh, some kind of support, whether it's a class or a person you're reaching out to. Uh, time management system and goals, those go hand in hand. I know, you know you've heard me talk about this in the past. It is a core piece of what we go through in the workshop. And I really want to encourage you, if you haven't dialed in your time management system yet, if you haven't picked up a planner, if you haven't worked out how to utilize your tech time management system, as I talk about in the book, uh, then you're, you're running at a disadvantage. And that's not to say that it isn't, e it's definitely can be challenging. That's why time management for hunter types is difficult. We tend to have a fluid perception of time. That is, you know, that's from directly from um, Tom Hartman. I read that in one of his books, and I really love that expression. We have a fluid, fluid perception of time. Therefore, it's more important than ever for us to get our time management system in place so that we can start to wrangle time in and get to a place where we can set uh, an intention for when we want to do something and then we follow through with it. And we are capable of doing it. It is a habit, it is a muscle that we need to build, but we are capable of doing it. And often it's more about how do you utilize your natural tendencies to schedule things. So you're mindful of like, as I, if you've heard me say in the past, if you're scheduling something you really care about, at the end of the day, when you're wiped out, if it's an art project or if it's something you something that's that's been burning in you to work on, and you know you're going to be tired at the end of the day and wiped out, then don't do that to yourself. <laughs> schedule it to schedule it some other time. Schedule it in the morning. Give yourself the benefit of your peak time for the things that you most care about. And even if you have a family, even if you have you have people that are relying on you for certain things. You there's still room to schedule time for yourself. And I really encourage it when I, I work with a lot of people who have families and that are parents and they have to uh, learn how to set boundaries and say, you know what, I need to ask my spouse to take up take up the slack over here. Uh, and often because there's the hunter type challenges where we haven't been able to, um, we, we may have a challenge following through on some mundane tasks. We have a, a low sense of self-esteem because of it. And then we feel like, oh, it's, I shouldn't ask for this because if I do, you know, I haven't done this and I haven't done this. But at the end of the day, if you're happy, if you're fulfilled, if you're alive and, re and vitalized, then you're going to help the whole family out. And you're also going to really model for your kids what it looks like to have to honor yourself, take care of yourself. And that's a model that they will then take on themselves and it will help them in their world and, and as they grow up. Uh, so it's so important to model what we most want our kids to do. And if you are a hunter type, there's a very high likelihood that you've got at least one of your kids that is a hunter type as well. It's clearly something that gets passed down through the genes. So one of the first points I want to talk about is the all or nothing tendency as hunter types. Again, I'm refreshing this, but I, it, I cannot stress it enough. I repeat things over and over because I know you need to hear them. So uh, the hunter type tendency of it's either I either I hit the goal perfectly as I intended or forget it. I just I, you just give up and then you, you just, just fall back into the slump again. That is a gen, that is a chemical wiring in your brain that's doing that to you. So you, it's something we have to fight against a bit. So again, the tendency is I didn't achieve the goal. I've set a goal. I didn't achieve it the way in the time I allotted, which is you can almost guarantee that you're going to uh, undershoot how long it's going to take. That is one of that's the tendency that I know I have. I have to continually come back to. Okay, is this realistic? Is it not? And then I'm also, for me personally, I have to build into, okay, I'm not going to beat myself up. I know I have this tendency. Okay, it, didn't, it took longer than I expected. Okay, I just get back up again. And so because the self-judgment has been minimized, it's much easier for me to just get back up again. It's when 
in, again, from what I've observed in both myself and in my coaching clients, if you have the, okay, you, you, you set a goal, you didn't hit it, and then you just berate yourself and you've got all the negative self-judgment, that's the thing that keeps you from getting back up again. So you just have to go, okay, I didn't hit the goal, no problem. It's more important for me to get back up again than it is to have hit it perfectly. So again, all or nothing tendency tends to shoot us in the foot. So to counteract it, it's essential to do the kinds of regular check-ins that we're talking about here, where you look back at your goals from the year and you tune in, you say, okay, here's where I got to. Maybe you did make some progress. And maybe you made a ton of progress on one of your goals. And so you can leverage that energy and say, okay, I got really far on this. How do I use that self-confidence and that energy to move that towards some of the er other areas in my life that are challenging, that I'm having a hard time getting traction on? Because as hunter types, we can hyper-focus. We've got superpowers, but it tends to be in the areas of things we're most interested in, we're most uh, the, the things that really just light us up and get us going. So if we have those things in our lives that that really nourish that, like it's maybe it's creativity, maybe it's some some project that you've been working on where you feel like you're really making some progress, then leverage that sense of self-esteem to then w move towards the other areas in your life. Focus that energy towards getting your time management system up and going. Have that same level of the focus and vitality focus it towards those things. Or maybe it's just, okay, I need to burn on cleaning up the house. I need to, like, the house has just become completely a mess and I need to just go, okay, I'm going to hunter type this thing up. I'm going to, like, burn on this for two days and I'm going to totally get it back into shape again so that I can breathe and I can look around and I can feel a sense of clarity and relief that everything is in order. And so th that's one way that we can utilize that instead of thinking, okay, I need to do like a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow, a little bit. If you do that, oftentimes we don't make progress. So sometimes it's more important for us as hunter types to, to burn on something for a bit, take a break, burn on it again and get it to a place where it's at least manageable. So you may want to do that with some of your goals. You may take one of your goals and say, okay, wait a minute. This one goal has been sitting on my plate for a long time. Maybe it's, I really want to get in cardio exercise. I want to get that going. I want to have regular cardio in my life, which for again is like, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, regularly, like daily, or uh, two or three times a week at like a half hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so instead of thinking, I've got to do this forever, switch it around. Say, I'm going to do, uh, for this coming week, I'm just going to, I'm going to aim for four days in a row. That's my focus. I'm going to hit four days and I'm going to celebrate that I hit four days in a row, 15 minutes each day, and then reward yourself at the end. That's how you should do it as a hunter type. Build the habit, take the goal, see if you can create a habit that will move you towards that goal and give yourself a very short time frame to hit the first milestone. So let's do an exercise. Let's just take hit pause for a second. And I, what I want you to do is, if you can, either close your eyes if you're, if you're not driving <laughs> or just take a moment, really listen to my voice, come into this present moment and tune into the following questions. One, what were your intentions going into the new year, 2019? What were the things that you've said, okay, I, these are the things I really want to accomplish going into this year. Bring them to mind and see, see if you can visualize them, you know, put them onto the, the, the projector screen, see them, see them clearly in your mind. And then ask yourself, okay, what was achieved on the goals that you've set for yourself? What were your wins? See if you can know any, like what, where, what were the areas of progress that you've had since the beginning of the year? So now think about what were the goals that, what goals of, of the things that you've set, set out for yourself at the beginning of the year, which ones are still really alive? What are the ones where like, when you think about that goal, you go, yes, that's really what I want to accomplish. And that possibly could be coupled with, oh, I didn't get it done. And you feel terrible. You're like, God, I didn't get that done. I feel awful. I just haven't made any progress on this at all. 
that's fine. That's alive too. It's alive because you're feeling like, oh, defeated. So that's still alive. Either you're excited about it or you're just like, oh, either way, there's energy behind it. So the next question is for the goals that are still really alive, what derailed you? If you haven't achieved them in to the point of that you've really wanted to achieve them, what derailed you? Did you get discouraged? Did you not have the supports you need? Were you completely relying on your own willpower to achieve them? Or did you think about ways to get support? And maybe that support, you you moved towards the support and it just wasn't enough. So how do you, so the next question is then, with the goals that are most alive, what kind of support do you need to make some progress so you can continue the journey and move it forward? And finally, pick one of those goals and ask yourself, what's one thing that you can achieve in the next week that if you achieved it with that goal, you'll feel like you've reignited the energy with that goal, where you feel like you've, you've put it back onto the front burner and you're now focusing on it. So these kinds of check-ins, these kinds of reboot exercises are essential for us on a weekly basis, ideally at least a monthly basis, and definitely on a bi-yearly basis. Because when we don't do this kind of exercise, then I'm sure you are, if you went through that, you, you probably already are going, oh yeah, you know what, That's, I really do need to do that. Maybe I really do need to schedule uh, the class that I've been wanting to take for the, next, for the last couple months. Whatever it is, um, taking the action now, as you're hearing my voice, if there's something's alive and you don't wait, don't conceptualize it, hit pause, write it down, make a phone call, do what you need to do to give yourself that added boost to move towards that goal, to reignite the goal. So I want to talk about setting boundaries. And at the core of setting boundaries is prioritizing yourself. And what's so important in this situation is if you've been brought up to with the thought form that if you take care of yourself or you prioritize yourself, you're being selfish, then you need to re-examine that thought form, especially if you're a parent, because if you're not setting boundaries for yourself, you're not getting time to regenerate, to revitalize yourself, then as a hunter type, as you probably already know, then you're going to be prone to meltdowns and meltdowns do not help your family. So if you have regular schedule time that it's during the week where you have just you time where you can either just turn off and relax, take care of yourself, maybe get a massage, maybe just whatever it is that lights you up or focus on a creative project and maybe do it with other people. So you have some kind of accountability to move yourself forward, whatever it is for you. If you make it a priority that you're setting boundaries for yourself, you're going to be happier. You're going to be more fulfilled. You're going to be able to be more present with your children. If you have kids or if it's just you and you're working on yourself and you're, and it's, you're, uh, you're single and you're just working on your life, then it's also important to just take time. If you have a high stress job or if you have, um, Um, school that you're you're attending right now and you're feeling like overloaded, taking time to just take care of yourself, take care of your physical body is going to pay huge dividends in the future. So uh, we live in a very high stress society and for hunter types, that high stress leads to meltdowns. It leads to us being, being just not functioning at our highest level. So it is really important, especially going into the summer, to schedule time to reboot and set boundaries. And again, going back to time management, when we have a good time management system, we're more able to set clear boundaries and to start building in habits into our schedule that really take care of us. So that is why time management is so important. It's not about, to me, And this is kind of the core of, I think this is what makes this work a little different than other people who talk about ADHD is one, I don't see you guys as broken. I see you as being, having a neurological type that I share with you. And two, we have these superpowers, but in order to utilize them, we have to have the tools and the support needed to, to really, really maximize them. So again, setting boundaries, time management, interconnected. 
And so your assignment from today's podcast is identify one of the goals you've set for yourself at the beginning of the year, at least one, and then set a clear intention of what you want to accomplish within the next week. What is the end result of what you want to accomplish? Then work backwards and set a clear, realistic agenda for how you're going to accomplish that goal. How are you going to get that goal re-energized again? So I hope that was helpful to you. Once again, the Alive Online Workshop begins May 18th. Early bird pricing ends this coming Saturday, May 11th at midnight. Um, I do have one or two coupon codes. If money is an issue, uh, reach out. Uh, I would Anyone who wants to be in this, I would like to give them the opportunity to join us. Uh, you can reach me at info at alivelifecoaching.com. And to learn more about the workshop, go to alivelifecoaching.com forward slash course. The website is drummerinthegreatmountain.com. That's where you can purchase the book. There's lots of articles. You can see a searchable list of podcasts and topics. Uh, Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can get to those in the upper right-hand corner of the website. Um, The book is now available on Amazon, uh, on Kindle as well. Um, The ebook is available on Kindle, iBooks, and Google Play. You can search it there. We're a small press. Help us spread the word. Reviews are super helpful. Thank you all so much for your positive reviews. Consider writing a review on Amazon. We just put it up there. Um, And we'd love to hear from you. So if you are interested in a specific topic, um, please reach out. You can write me at info at drummerinthegreatmountain.com. Got a couple really good suggestions this last week. So I'm looking forward to covering those in future podcasts. Uh, We've got some really exciting things coming up. So if you're not on our email list, please hop on the website and join the email list. Got a couple cool announcements coming up in the next couple weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. And until next time, be well.